Could you tell us why the South China Sea uh, and the who are the players and why why mm -hmm. should this matter to Americans? Sure. Well, the South China Sea uh, is on the southeastern coast of, of uh, China, and it's an area uh, where there are a lot of uh, maritime disputes as well. So there's disputes over the sovereignty over the islands, there's dispute over the jurisdiction in the waters, and that really gets to who gets to have the resources in the waters. And there's also uh, disputes between the United States and China in this region uh, that center on uh, who gets to control the access of the international community to the waters in that region. It's important, this, this region is important for a lot of, a lot of reasons, frankly. Um, obviously, a lot of the world's trade goes through that region as it's a good east-west corridor between uh, the Middle East, where the oil is, and the eastern Asia, where a lot of the um, economic engines of, of the world are. So in addition to all of the economic reasons for which it's important, it's also important because China has a continental power growing in, in power. Uh, both in terms of its, its military power and its economic power and its ability to extend them around its periphery, um, is encroaching on an area that uh, has for many decades been uh, an area where the United States, and particularly the United States Navy, has had the privilege of operating with, with a fair amount of freedom. And, uh, and so now that, you know, there, there's kind of a friction point there in the South China Sea between the American thinking about how to establish not only national security, but security for the global system that, that uh, enables this, this uh, uh, functioning of the economic aspects of the, yeah. of the global economy. How do the Chinese think about the South China Sea? What are their interests there? What do they want? Well, um, the Chinese think about the South China Sea, and uh, well, it's, it's complex, I should say, <laughs> is, it, to, to start. Um, the Chinese have articulated a nine-dash line that's sort of, it's U-shaped, and extends all the way almost to uh, the, the coastline of Malaysia in the south. And many hundreds, really it's about 1,200 miles, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. from the Chinese mainland to their uh, furthest extent of where they, they actually make a claim. So um, this really reflects not only a Chinese claim to the actual islands in the South China Sea, but also a, a sense of uh, a national entitlement right, to this region that uh, is based on China's sense of its his historical rights and its um, traditional centrality uh, in East Asia over, over the many centuries uh, before uh, China's uh, challenging period over the last 100, 150 years. So do you think we're seeing a new era where the South China Sea will sort of be a, a symbol for uh, a challenge to American American power in Asia, and um, how would that how would that affect you know in your view American strategy as we mm. think about the yeah well some forward. some big questions there um, the first question um, concerning a challenge to American power in a sense it it is actually in a sense it is the Chinese see American presence which has been there since uh, particularly in the naval form but also in air forces and ground forces that have been stationed in the region for for those decades. Um, that presence, uh, as I said, kind of encroaches on, uh, on Chinese interests, uh, both their interests in the South China Sea itself um, and in their interests in being able to exercise leadership uh, within the Southeast Asian region. Um, you know, the, the Chinese express these interests uh, in terms of uh, a right to, to, to essentially lead the political um, organization of Southeast Asia. Uh, and, and also a right to control the access to the resources in mm -hmm. the South China Seas as well, both the, the hydrocarbons, the gas and oil underneath the seabed, but also the fish in, 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 the, uh, in the water space there. And bearing in mind that this is a long way from the, from the Chinese shoreline, some of their claims are um, not well accepted, quite frankly, not only in the region, but by the international community. So when you ask, is, does it present a, you know, kind of a, challenge to American power, there is a direct sense in which it does. It's the, that military friction that I've, I've alluded right. to, but, but also in a, in a sort of indirect sense it does as well, and that is that the um, United Nations Convention on the, on the Law of the Sea is a, is a convention that established a framework um, of, of how the oceans should be divided up. And uh, China's U-shaped line claim in the South China Sea that, that uh, extends so far south um, there's no sense in which that, that line um, actually complies with, with the provisions of the United Nations Convention. And, and so that's a problem, right? That, that's a problem in, in the first instance in that all the neighbor states are attempting to articulate their claims in the South China Sea based on this rule set that, that the UNCLOS, United right. Nations Convention, provides. China's taking a fundamentally different approach based on sort of their long sense of history there. And that's an indirect challenge to American authority in the sense that it challenges the rule sets, right? It challenges the basis 
for stability at sea. Looking ahead, uh, what should people who are interested in this issue look for as sort of uh, next benchmarks, next steps, mm. yeah. signals that either things are going well or, or they're not going well? I'd say first what we'd like to see is, is for all of the coastal states uh, to do two things. Uh, the first is to uh, be careful to move forward in ways mm. that strengthen the rule-based approach to, uh, to dividing up territory at sea uh, so that uh, th there's a movement forward towards stability by following the rules, right? right. That's the first step forward um, and, and the best step forward that, that can happen. The other side of what we'd also like to see is, to, is this confidence building measures now be put to actual uh, progress, right? There are various ways that confidence building measures can be undertaken, uh, including just very limited things like conferences and, 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 and discussions, but also bigger things like operating together, like working together to build sustainable fisheries in the region. Right. Something that everyone has in common uh, that, that would be, frankly, a good and easy approach and would reduce a lot of the frictions because a lot of the fr frictions have to do with um, states disagreeing over who has fishing rights in the various approaches, uh, various areas of that, of that region. I want to I want to thank you, uh, Peter Dutton, for joining us here at CSIS. Your uh, expertise is is very much appreciated, and I know you're in high demand here in Washington and and around Asia these days. So thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.